All right, guys, welcome back. So like I said, we're gonna be getting into 3D problems. And um, the coordinate direction angles is something that you kind of need to know. But in most problems that you're gonna be facing in finals and like midterms and stuff, you most likely are not gonna have coordinate direction angles. But who knows, I don't know. Plenty of experience from a few colleges. So let's... Um, Let's start with this problem. So the, actually, first, let's, what are the coordinate direction angles? So that is cosine alpha is fx divided by the magnitude of the force. So we know that the, some vector, some force is going to be made up of fxi plus fyj plus fzk. Okay, and its x component divided by its magnitude, right, is equal to cosine alpha. And then same thing for cosine beta. So that's the angle that the force makes with the x-axis, positive x-axis. Cosine beta is going to be Fy divided by the magnitude of the force. And then you have cosine gamma, which is going to be the z component divided by its magnitude of the force okay okay and um, yeah so let's there's a few ways to do this there's a shortcut that you know they, they tell you the 75 pound force makes an angle of 30 degrees with the XY plane okay so um, makes an angle of 30 degrees with the XY plane and if if you continue the z axis, if you keep extending it, you know that this full angle here should be 90 degrees. Okay, so we know that this is 60. All right, but if you if you're trying to take it, if you're trying to calculate the coordinate um, angles, coordinate direction angles, we know that we're trying to calculate this angle. This is gamma, right? This angle is alpha, and then this angle here is beta. All right. So right away, I see that the z, the the coordinate direction angle gamma for the z component is going to be that 30 degrees plus a 90 degree angle here, All right? So it's going to be 120, but who knows? Who, what do I know? All right. So let's let's just break it down into smaller steps. So first, let's break this force down into its components, okay? So F, let's choose, choose a different color. So F, I want to break it down into my I, J components. So my I... Yeah, I plus J plus some K. All right. So this one, this is gonna be a bit tricky. So I, actually, let let's do the K component first. All right. The K component is gonna be seventy-five sine thirty. Okay. Sine. 30 because we're looking at this small triangle here all right let's kind of highlight it with a different color so it's going to be some force in the xy plus some form some force in the z component okay so that adjacent side is cosine and the opposite side is the, the sine, right? And the sine corresponds to the force vector that's parallel to the z-axis. So that's what we did, 75 sine 30. Okay? But we want to find what we want to find this angle now. Okay? This, and we'll, and we'll call it fxy. Okay? Because it's not in the x or it's not in the y. It's in the xy plane. Okay? You, you're pretty much laying the force of 75 
down onto the seven, uh, onto the xy plane, and that corresponds to the adjacent side of this triangle that you, we just made in that purple. Okay, and the adjacent side is always cosine. Okay, so it's going to be seventy five cosine thirty. Okay, and then one more thing, this. The z component is actually pointing in the negative direction, right? It's pointing downwards, so it should be minus. Okay, you guys didn't tell me what the heck. All right, 75 cosine 30. All right, so now let's just focus on this one. Okay, so this one is uh, this one's 75 cosine 30, and this is this is. It's gonna. Be, it's harder to explain through through um, through an online lesson, right? And it's and a lot of times I have students struggle when I do it with a physical like three D representation using like multiple papers to to represent this. So bear with me. So now you've laid this f force into the x y plane, and you've decomposed it into the z plane because we already knew that one of these components was parallel to the z axis. Okay, so now this purple vector here is the 75 cosine 30, okay? And now, if we look at it from above, okay, we're gonna see my y, this is my x, and then we're gonna see some force our force vector 75 cosine 30 making an angle of 45 degrees with the y-axis okay and it's pointing in the positive y and positive x directions okay so now from here now we can get the fx component and the fy component of that force okay so the fx component is going to be uh, 75 cosine 30 so that's just the force 75 cosine 30 right and now remember 75 cosine 30 is just the, the, the magnitude of, of, of this blue vector all right don't confuse this cosine 30 with some angle here now okay and now what's my adjacent side of this triangle it's going to be the y-axis here. So the y-axis in this case is going to be cosine 45 and the opposite side is the x-axis, so sine 45. Okay. So now that I have these two, right, I already have my f, of, f sub z, right, so 75 times cosine 30 <coughs> times sine 45. So here I have 45 Point nine, and here I have oh same thing forty five point nine okay and now my components is gonna are gonna be forty five point nine i plus forty five plus nine point nine j minus seventy five sine thirty right which should be thirty what is that 37.5 30 oh 37.5 right 37.5 times two yeah okay so those are my components now now we want to determine each vector each, sorry each coordinate angle so now let's go back to the beginning so Cosine alpha is going to be 45.9 divided by the magnitude of that vector, which is 75. Okay. And then cosine beta, it's the same thing. Cosine 45.9, 45.9, 75. And last but not least, I have minus 37.5 over 75. So doing the inverse of each one, we have alpha beta and gamma 
All right, so let's do inverse cosine 45.9 divided by 75. So that's 52.3. Uh, this is going to be 52.3 as well. And then inverse cosine of minus 37.5 divided by 75. Oh, look, we get 120. Okay. And these are your coordinate direction angles. Okay. They're the angles that a vector makes with the x, y, and z axes. Okay. And that's all. I know this video is a little bit longer, I believe, um, but. You know, once you get to the 3D, it's harder to visualize it, and especially harder to explain it on paper, okay? All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.